It's the 12th morning of November of 86, and straight ahead in this hour, we are going to meet Ben Hamper. He is the fourth generation of his family to put together motor vehicles on a GM assembly line in Michigan. But he is the first in his family to also write about life on that assembly line. As we'll see, he writes very well, <laughs> even if it's not very well received by his bosses. And we'll also... Contributing correspondent Betty Rollin is back with us this morning with another of her People You Should Know. This is her series about people who aren't household names but are certainly worth knowing. Betty. Thanks, Jane. There are a lot of people in all kinds of jobs who think they have a talent for writing. They're usually wrong. But this morning's story is about a 31-year-old factory worker who thought that, and he was right. Flint, Michigan, birthplace of General Motors. In spite of cutbacks, 60,000 workers are still employed here. Ben Hamper, a fourth-generation GM worker, is one of them. Ben's a riveter. He makes trucks. But that's not all. He also makes words. Rather than dreading the tedium that accompanies assembly labor, I found that one should lie down and wallow in it. Let repetition be its own reward. Reject change, reject variety, aspire to vegetation and dance that trance around. His column, Impressions of a Rivet Head, has appeared everywhere from an underground Flint newspaper to Harper's Magazine. The Wall Street Journal ran a front page profile of Ben, and Mother Jones Magazine put him on the cover. I sort of enjoy the fact that I'm celebrating the average man. There's so many, so many, you know, columns and books and novels and stories written about you know, congressmen and reggie jackson here i am writing about the steering gear man or the polish sex god or the boss man or uh hog jaw these are all characters that work on the rivet line just you know minute figures in history but to me you know they're important people it pleases ben that among his co-workers he's still just another rivet head they're not all that impressed by it, you know. They're more interested in uh, hot rod review, uh, you know, and fixing up motorcycles, racing snowmobiles. They're not into, you know, writing as much. They think it's fine, they think it's great, but they, you know, it's no big thing to them, you know, unless I got something in field or stream or... <laughs> <laughs> what does your family feel about your success? Um, my mother would prefer I was writing for the Catholic Weekly. <laughs> but outside of that, uh, they're quite proud and they're, they're quite surprised, <laughs> honestly, because uh, uh, I was like a straight D student in high school and everything, and they didn't really expect much out of me, except 30 years, you know, banging the product out for General Motors. Working the rivet line is like being paid to flunk high school the rest of your life. An adolescent time warp that peddles report cards, line audit scores, and serves up detention, indefinite layoffs. Ben's 13-year-old daughter, Sonia, the parents are divorced, gave her own view of her father in her school newspaper. My dad has a different side. He's really weird. If my dad hears a song that he really doesn't like, he'll make up different words to it. He listens to a lot of crazy music on his radio show. Some is some of his friends are weird as him, or weirder, but I still love them. And you're listening to Take No Prisoners on wonderful radio, WFPE, Hamper and McDonald. In addition to his writing, Ben co-hosts a bi-weekly radio show. He deliberately plays rock groups no one else plays. Here's some new stuff by the Angry Samoans. Yeah. yeah. Listen every night, you hear the same old line. He also has musical ambitions of his own. He and Dave Steele, fellow shop rats as they call themselves, are writing a shop opera. If someone asks you what your profession is, what do you say? I'm an auto worker. Until I work over at the truck plant. You know, I have no desire to quit the shop and become this writer because I quit the shop, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to uh, lose the inspiration behind all the writing. I enjoy the uh, notoriety, yet uh, I like to go to work every day and see the guys and drink a quart of beer out in Hogjaw's station wagon and look at the stars and the barbed wire. You know? Hey, you're looking at 
Magic Man. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Rivetheads. Thank you. And Rivetheads. Ben's writing hasn't endeared him either to General Motors or the Union. GM wouldn't let us into the factory, and the Union complains he gives a negative view of factory workers. Ben says they both lack a sense of humor and of reality. I'll bet. <laughs> Major motion picture inside two years. Probably you right. You heard it here first. We'll be back after a message.